The name harmonium was patented in 1842 by Alexander Francois de Ban in Paris and it was for a keyboard instrument which used pressurised air from bellows powered by two foot pedals to produce sound from three reeds. Um, as I said it was a keyboard instrument, it also had a divided keyboard so you could choose different sounds on the bass and treble sides of the keyboard and the three reeds are basically little brass reeds a reed set in a matrix which is allowed to vibrate freely as air passes over it and produce a pitch uh, just like this. You can find the same sound on the instrument. This is a very simple idea which gave us a, a keyboard instrument which had the, a, a sonority like a pipe organ but also the expressive capabilities like a violin because Free reeds aren't affected by humidity, heat or changes in air pressure so you can go very quiet and very loud without altering the pitch and all that's controlled by the two foot pedals. This is a French instrument probably made in the late 1860s, early 1870s and it's thought to be made in Paris by the firm of Christophe and Etienne, uh, one of the leading firms at that time making harmoniums for chapels and salon use as well. It has a very standard specification and it's thought to have come to the hall uh, sometime in the late 19th, early 20th century from a local chapel. The specification, as I've said, is a very standard of a French harmonium of that time. They were built to a certain style, and uh, Deban's original patents included the idea that stops could be numbered and have letters on them. So as you'll see from the music we have here, certain pieces have numbers in circles above and below the staves. And this refers to the stops you're supposed to pull out. A stop uh, written above the stave of the music, say a number one, means pull out number one in the treble. Written below the stave means pull it out in the base of the instrument. And I'll take you on a little tour around the instrument to show you all the different sounds it has on it. This instrument essentially has eight different stops and four different sounds throughout the keyboard. Number four to one in the bass and one, two, three and a C for a celeste in the treble. The number one is a flute stop, uh, a sort of a rather round sound as you'll hear. That's an eight foot pitch, the same as a piano. Then we have the number two stops, which are a bourdon in the bass, clarinet in the treble, uh, at 16 foot pitch, so one octave lower than written. Going very low. Um, then we have a number three stop, which is at four foot pitch, usually a clarion or fifra, a very sort of bright sound. So it's an octave higher than written. And these go very high. And the bass. We also have a number four in the bass, which is a bassoon, another reed sound. And as I said, the keyboard's divided, so in the bass, the bottom 29 notes operate the bass stops, which then stop there, so they're completely separate on that side. Then in the treble, instead of the number four continuing, we have a celeste. Now, a voix celeste, a celestial voice, is um, usually an organ stop, and it's a, a shimmering stop where a, a sound is tuned, out of tune slightly, usually slightly sharp to create a wavering sound. On a harmonium, what happens is the maker takes two reeds at the same time, one tuned sharp and one tuned flat, so they waver around the note, creating this very beautiful shimmering sound. That can then be combined with almost any, any 
sound to give this sort of beautiful sound. Um, on top of that, this maker was quite ingenious in how they created more stops. In the bass, there's a sordina, a muted stop, and what they've done is they've taken the number one stop and they've cut off the air supply slightly. So if I play you number one normally, it's that volume. If I play you the sordine, which uses the same reeds, it's a very, very quiet, a very quiet version. Because on harmoniums, the bass tends to take all of the air much easier because the reeds are bigger. And so if you wanted to accompany a melody, you could use this sordine instead. In the top half, we also have a tremolo which acts on the number two clarinet stop. So normally the clarinet is this. But the tremolo uh, produces a vibrating effect, which, as you suggested, is a tremolo. A strange effect. Um, these reeds are laid out inside the instrument, directly underneath the keyboards. So numbers one and two are always at the front here, and numbers three and four on the celeste on this instrument are at the back behind these green uh, pieces of cloth. And to make them louder and quieter, we have forte stops which open and close flaps at the back of the instrument. So on the numbers three and four and celeste stops, with the forte flap closed, if I open it, it changes the vowel sound of the instrument completely and makes it much brighter and a much clearer sound to the reeds. As I said, it's not clear exactly when this instrument arrived at Erdig. Um, we're here in the tribes room, which shows the chief families of North Wales in their crests on the walls. Uh, but the family would have used this instrument and there are music books in the house which are for harmonium and contain the harmonium registrations. Um, these pieces uh, vary in style from parlour music to religious music to Christmas carols uh, and ancient music as well. So you'll find things by Mozart, Handel and Couperin. Um, and there's also a, a very interesting book by Leibach, a, a French organist, pianist and composer of very sort of popular salon music, but he also played the organ and the harmonium. And the book belonged to Louisa Scott and throughout the book she's written little comments at the top of certain pieces and they include comments such as uh, good, hideous, ugly, uh, whether they're comments on her own playing or whether they're comments on the actual pieces of music, somebody else will have to decide on that, we don't know. Uh, but it's really fascinating to bring this music to life on an instrument which she may have played these pieces on. And here, this instrument could have been used for singing, dancing, religious music, anything whatsoever. That's what's great about these instruments because they were so popular, almost more popular than the piano at one time, and they sold more pieces of music uh, than piano music at one time. Hundreds and hundreds of thousands of sheets of music, all arranged for harmonium. <laughs> Because the harmonium was supposed to be an expressive version of the pipe organ, um, there are two ways of providing the wind to it. You'll notice that when I, I pull out stops, if I don't pump the pedals at all, there's absolutely no sound whatsoever. So the bellows are inside and there's two feeders which can fill a quite a large reservoir. So um, if I just want to fill up the reservoir, I can give it a couple of pumps and then play a chord. <laughs> As you can see, on this instrument they last quite a long time. But on the most expensive French instruments, uh, the best players would always use a stop called expression. And as the name suggests, that's what gives you expression directly to your feet. It bypasses the bellows so you can't fill them up. And as soon as you touch the pedals, 
the air is taken directly to the reeds. So if I draw expression, we've now shut off from the large reservoir and that can't be used now. And as soon as I play a note and try and push the pedal, it acts on the reeds. And it's very sensitive. You can do vibrato, an accent. And of course, if you're using very big sounds, you can actually grow from almost nothing and do a crescendo just with your feet. And that's why this instrument was so expressive. On this instrument, we also have uh, a little lever here in the middle. It's a grand jeu, which in, is French for full organ, all of the stops. And it literally pulls on all of these stops blindly inside the instrument. So if I'm playing on a quiet sound, and I want to add full organ, I just push the knee lever to the left. The slight discomfort with this one is that you have to literally hold it on as you're playing this. You have to end up with a, a slightly odd pumping action. This is one of the best examples of a French instrument you'll find. Uh, and it sounds just as good as the day it was made because harmonium reeds aren't affected by age. Um, they don't lose their tuning or change in their sound. And so, whereas with many historic instruments, parts need to be replaced, this sounds as good as it did the day it was made. Thank you.